Hello, my friends. Hopefully the rain on the yurt won't be too disturbing. Now, I'm going to show you something at the top of the yurt. So even though I'm not sleeping outside every night, which would be awesome, that dome, which is clear, I'm not sure if you could see that, allows me when I'm sleeping to look up and I get to see the stars all night long. Now, twice since we moved in here, about three months ago, I've seen some UFOs, and I mean that in the, not necessarily aliens, but unidentified, things that I couldn't identify. And last night was one of them. When I saw this go over, I was very, very curious about it. I'd never seen anything like it before. It looked like a satellite, and it moved at that, with that silent smoothness that satellites move with. But it was three satellites, all in a row, in perfect alignment. And so it was unidentified for me. Now it's an IFO. It's identified. At least I'm pretty sure it is. I think what I saw last night was the far tail end of the SpaceX satellite train. What does this have to do with rewilding and woodsness? Well, if you are out camping and exploring right now, then you might be looking up at the night sky and you're going to see this thing go over. It's pretty amazing looking if you see videos of it. Instead of just one, two, three, I'm going to say there's a 50 or 100 of these satellites all in a train moving across the sky. And like me, you might see that camping out and think, holy cow, this is the alien invasion coming. <laughs> but this is a SpaceX satellite train. And if you want to see it for yourself, there is a website that you can go to. It is n2yo.com. And that website has you can look up any satellite, but they have a handy little banner on the top where they're going to say, here's the SpaceX satellite. You hit on that, and it's going to tell you at your location where, uh, when and where. So you're going to have to learn about elevation and azimuth, which I'll explain here in just a moment. And I'll try to do that very simply. But it'll tell you what time and where you can see it in the sky. This is only going to last for a little while. I think that the satellites are going to break up or some are going to get dimmer. Something's going to happen so we won't have that train visible for a real long time. But if you want to see it for yourself, get outside, explore. You're going to see that train. You're probably going to see shooting stars. Hear owls if you're out in the woods. It's going to be an awesome nighttime experience. Anything that gets us out at night tends to be a good thing. If you go to that website and you want to understand azimuth and elevation, it's going to have a little AZ. Azimuth is going to be where you are on the compass bearing. So zero is going to be north, 180 is going to be straight south. And so for instance, tonight at a little bit after 10 o'clock in Wisconsin, it's going to be at about 140. So it's going to be into the southeast. That's going to tell you what direction to look. The elevation is pretty easy to understand. It's going to be how high in the sky with the ground being zero degrees and straight above you being 90 degrees. So they're going to tell you the direction and then it's going to be a number between zero and 90. Tonight in Wisconsin, it'll be at 53 degrees. And then I know I'm going to stand towards the Southeast, look up at 53 degrees, at three minutes after 10 o'clock and I should see the satellite train coming by. Again, it's N2YO. Check it out. It's an interesting human phenomena up in the sky. I don't quite know how I feel about satellites. I remember when they were rare. Now, as I watch at night, they're streaking by constantly. But if nothing else, this is a great excuse, everybody, to get outside and get a little nature time, look at those stars, contemplate the vast infinitude of our universe, and see what humans have been up to with this satellite train. Check it out, let me know what you think. All right, love to you all.